Hi, everyone. We'll wait just one more minute for everyone to get all set up. Thank you all for joining us. Um, my name is Peter. I'm going to be running a really cool science activity and space activity for us today. Um, the only materials you'll need for right now are your brain, because we're going to be making some observations and some hypotheses. You'll want a piece of paper, or if you can, you can print out a data sheet that we may have shared. I'm not sure. I will post it in the chat again. Um, but if you don't have that, that is totally okay. What you'll want is a something to write with and a piece of paper, and you'll want to make a couple of different boxes. So you'll want a total of six boxes in two rows, just like this. And you can go ahead and do that. And if you haven't gotten that, we can go over together how to make it, make the data sheet once we're all back together and we have something to write with and a piece of paper. Do you have what you need, Nippon, for this? OK, great. Awesome. So I'm going to share my screen. All right, Natalie has a question. Oh, Natalie. What's your question, Natalie? Well, um, space and where rockets go. Space yeah. is where rockets go. That's yes. awesome. You are clearly you've been thinking about space a lot before this, huh? Do you like space? Yeah, awesome. You're going to really enjoy this activity then, I think. So I'm going to share my screen. Let's see. I want to share this screen. Great. Can you all see this worksheet? Great. You can make your worksheet look something like this. It doesn't need to look exactly like this. But the key thing is you want to have spots for three different mystery objects. That's going to be what we're looking at. And then we want a row that says how many squares are mostly dark. And you could just write dark and light for the other one. You don't need to write out the whole sentence as long as you know what it means. And then you want a spot below these six empty squares where you can say which object you think is the biggest and which one you think is the smallest. And again, you don't need to get all these details in here. You just want enough where you can keep track of your observations. Making data sheets that will help you collect information is a big part of doing science because you want to be able to keep track of the things you note and then you can come back and think about them a little bit more. Do we have thumbs up? Are, we, are our data sheets ready to go? OK. I'm going to stop sharing my screen. There we go. OK, so today we're going to practice using a technique that scientists use to look for exoplanets. Has anyone heard of an exoplanet before? Is that the same as a dwarf planet? Mm, they can be the same, but they're not all the same. That's a really good guess, though. Natalie, have you heard of an exoplanet? It's a cool, spacey word. I no? Mean, yeah. Awesome. Well, this is a great time to learn about them. So exoplanets. Um, you know what kind of planet's in space? It's Saturn. Saturn is your favorite? Saturn's one of my favorites, too. I really like the rings on it. Is that why you like it? Yeah. Yeah. Awesome. No, it's on my rocket, my toy rocket. Oh, nice. So. Saturn is not an exoplanet, even though it's really cool. Exoplanets, exo sort of means outside, and these are planets that are outside of our solar system. So they're really, really, really far away. So when scientists are looking for them, they can't use sort of our normal strategies for looking for them because they're so far away. It's not like how you can look in a telescope right now and maybe you could see Venus or Saturn or Jupiter or something like that. We have to look, use different strategies to look at things that are super far away. These are planets that are orbiting, going in a circle around a star that's different from our sun. Have you ever seen an exoplanet? What do you think? Have you ever seen an exoplanet? Natalie says no. Nippon, have you ever seen an exoplanet? No. No? Well, we're going to practice how we could see them. So one way that scientists 
look for exoplanets is they use a really powerful telescope and they look at the star that they think a planet might be going in a circle around. And they're gonna look to see if that light sort of blinks a little bit or gets a little bit dimmer because that might mean that a planet is going in between that star and us and that would sort of make a shadow or block out some of that light. And if they see that happen at a pretty regular rate, meaning every few days or every few years and it's really nice and even, then they're pretty sure there's a planet there. So we're gonna use something called the transit method. It's a really fancy term, but basically we're gonna look for things that pass between us and the light. And today, we're going to use a tool. I'm gonna to tilt my camera down a little bit. We have this nice grid that we're gonna to use to measure how much light is being blocked by different objects. We're also going to use this lamp. I'm gonna turn it on. That's gonna be our star today, our source of light. And we're gonna see what we can learn about some planets that might pass between our source of light and our eyes. Does anyone have any guesses as to what we might be able to, I'm gonna tilt my camera back up. Does anyone have any guesses as to what we might learn about something or what we might be able to tell about it? Nippon, what do you think? I think that, will we this thing be big enough for us to see a real planet? Would our thing right here, this little box, not a real planet. We're going to use some objects that we're going to, I have a bunch of mystery objects in this bag. None of them are a real planet, but we're going to look at them and make some observations about them. Yeah, so, but I don't have the mystery box of a lamp. That is okay. We're going to do it together and you're going to make some observations and I will show it up and then you'll make some observations on your data sheet. Mm -hmm. That is a great question. Raise your hand, Sean. We have a question. You have a question, Natalie? Yeah. Go right ahead. I have a band-aid on my lead. You have a band-aid? Is it a plain band-aid or does it have a cool picture or design on it? Is it space? I can't tell. It's not space, it's Peppa. Pe oh, Peppa the pig? Yeah. yeah. Nice. Okay. That's okay. not fun to have an injury or a cut or something, but it is nice when you have a cool band-aid. All right, so. Does anyone think they could tell something special about an object when I put it in this box? We can't see it. What'd you say, Nippon? You can't see it? Mm -hmm. Well, we're gonna see, we're gonna see if we can make some hypotheses after our observations. So I'm going to tilt my camera back down. And I'm gonna turn our light on. Oh, so you can see. We have a nice grid, which will help us keep track of things. And right now my hand's in there. Can you all see my hand? Yeah. It's the shadow of your hand from the back. That's exactly right. My hand is blocking out some of the light from our lamp, in this case, which is going to be our star. I'm going to take my hand out of here. and I'm going to put an object in here. And we're going to use our data sheet to make some observations. And I have a couple different mystery objects in this bag. I'm gonna put one in between the light and where we can see. All right, can you all see it that? Looks, I, see, I see purple. You see some shadow? All right, so on your data sheet, whatever you did for your data sheet, I want you to, I'm gonna scoot this object a little bit to make our lives a little easier. So I want you, to count how many squares on my set of squares here. You can see we have 12 squares in total on this grid. How many squares are mostly dark? And it's okay if it has a little bit of shadow in there. You wanna see ones that are more than half, mostly shadow. Eight. You think there are eight boxes that are mostly shadowy from that object, Nippon? Um, Eight boxes dark, eight boxes light. So I would say that is a good place to start. I would say right here, do you see where my finger is? Um, yeah. That's the shadow we're talking about. 
does it go across eight different boxes? Oh. They're dark. Here it goes across, here it goes across four different boxes because, because you didn't put it exactly in a box, but, but I think that if you move it slightly, it could, it could fit in only one box. Ooh. Is that what you think too, Natalie and Ajuni? Do yeah, you agree? Yeah. Because I only see the pink thing, not the thing that's under it. It, it looks like a piece of paper that's as big as one box so if you just move it up it'll just fit in one box up here that is a great set of observations that you're all making so for this for the sake of that observation even though it's not perfectly lined up with one of our boxes we're going to keep track of how many boxes are mostly dark so we said there were four different boxes that our shadow overlaps with right these are the four that we're thinking do we think this box here where I'm pointing is mostly shadowy? Yes. Yeah? So that's one. How about this box? Is it mostly shadowy? No. No. So we're still at one. How about this one over here? It's it no. A little no. second. But how about that one? Do you think it's more shadow or more light? More light. More light. So I agree with all those observations. We actually only have, even though it's across four different boxes, we only have one box that's mostly shadow. That's that one. That one, exactly. And our other spot in our data sheet for that same mystery object number one is going to say, how many squares are mostly light? If there are 12 boxes in total and one of them is mostly dark, how many do we think are mostly light? Two. Eleven. Eleven. How did you get that number, Nippon? Well, simple. I know math. Twelve mm -hmm. minus one equals eleven. That's right. So if we say there are twelve boxes in total on this whole face <laughs> showing you all these different squares, and one of them is dark, the rest are light. So those, we're going to have twelve boxes. So we'll say one box is shadowy or dark and 11 are light. All right, that is our first object and set of observations. You guys did an awesome job. Should we try a different object? Yeah. Okay, I'm gonna turn our sun off. And I'm gonna pull my mystery object out of here. I'm trying not to let anybody see what they are. I don't wanna ruin the surprise. Mystery <laughs> object. All right. Go. Are we ready for another mystery object? Mystery. I'm going to tilt my camera down a little bit. That looks like a cup with a piece of paper on it. Looks like a cup with a piece of paper? Yeah. All right. So, can we all see our object in there? I think there's two objects because the... Or it's one big object because because somehow it looks like the the object is above the bottom and it can't go above the bottom. I'm gonna actually get, tell you all a secret. Are you ready? Mm -hmm. So inside this box, you're right. There are two objects. One of them is this clear little stand that I've been putting all of the mystery objects on top of. That way, it's not sitting right at the very bottom. So that might have been what you're seeing. It's supposed to be cute to cast less of a shadow, but that doesn't always work. I'm going, so we can ignore that little thing in there that's right now, and now I'm gonna put our mystery object back there. How many boxes do we think are mostly shadow? One! I think one thinks one. How many boxes are mostly shadow? Two. We think two? Now these yeah. observations two. How about you, Ajuni? What do you think? One. One. So Nippon and Ajuni, are you thinking this box right here is mostly shadow? Yeah. yeah. How about well, you, Natalie? Which one do you think is mostly shadow? The same one. The same one? Do you think it's just one box is mostly shadowy? Yeah. Do you think that it's more than half shadowy? If I drew a line around that mystery object, would it take up more than half of our square? What do we think? 
We'd get the other half and it would be all full. You think it's a half and then we just fill it up with the other half and maybe we have two of these objects? That could be. Do we think this object takes up more of the square than the other one we just looked at? Or less or the same? Can you see cat too? No, they can't see the cat right now. Well, maybe you should put both in so that we can look for differences to make it look similar or different. You want me to, that is a great idea. Should I put that first object back in there? Let's see. So I'm going to move our mystery object to one side of that little platform. I'm going to put our other object over here. So right here is the object number two. And back over here is object number one. Uh, the object number one took up one square mostly, right? And, and object number two, 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 one is bigger than object number two. I think that's right. So I think that the biggest object would be number one. Number one, we think right now is bigger than number two. Natalie, do you agree with that? Yeah, you do. Awesome. How about you, Junie? Did you think that was the right? Um, yeah, I think it was right. Cool. So, I have taken object number one out again, and we're just looking at object number two, which is right here. How, do we, how many squares do we think are mostly dark? We can add that to our... No, I'm not going to show them the cat right now. Do we think it's zero? Do we think it's one? Do we think it's two? One. One? one. What do you think, Natalie? One? One. All right. So we'll put down one square is mostly dark. And how many squares are mostly light then? Eleven. Eleven. Same as before. All right. I'm going to turn our sun off again, our star. I'm going to put a third mystery object in here. Ooh. Let me see if I can get out of this bag. No, it's the next mystery object. Are we ready? I'm going to turn the light on. Here's object number three. Whoa, that covers two boxes. I'm going to, I'm trying to get the sun nice and bright. My house got a lot brighter while we were doing this activity because the sun, the real sun came in. So it's making it a little harder to see. Well, I can see two boxes that are full with dark. I agree with the uni. You agree? What do you think, Natalie? How many boxes do you think are mostly shadowy? Um, four. You think four? Do you think yeah. it's these four right here, the ones I'm sort of circling? Yeah. Yeah, I could see that. But that, those two ones on the bottom aren't that shadowy as the two ones on the top. We definitely have different levels of shadowy or how dark they are. But how much of them are mostly, how many squares are more than half covered up with a shadow? If you think it's two, that is okay. If you think it's four, that is okay too. You want to write down your observations. Well, I think that two. No, two are dark. Like this is a long time. And, and if two are dark, then only ten are light. And that's number three. That is object number three. So Nippon thinks it's two dark and ten light. Are you going to tell us what the mystery object is? We will look at the mystery objects in a second. We're almost done. I think Natalie's showing us her cat, which is very nice. Or are we just moving to a different spot? That works. I wanted to uh, relocate to the couch. So. That's fair. It's more comfortable there. Natalie, you said there were four boxes you thought were mostly shadowy. Yeah. How many boxes, if there's four that are shadowy, how many do we think are mostly light? Twelve. So there's 12 in total. That's a great guess. There's not 12 in total because because there's four going down and four to the side. Four you times right. four. I, mis I miscounted before. 
Nippon, you did an awesome job. I said there were 12 boxes in total, which threw all of our math off. There was actually 16. You are totally right. Good. Oh my God. So, so we can that means our that other numbers a little bit too. That's, that's my mistake. That's what happens when I try to count on the camera instead of in real life. Natalie, do you have a comment or an observation? I do. What's your comment? Well, boxes, we have a lot of boxes at our house. You have a lot of boxes? At our house, yeah. Maybe you could try doing this activity at home too when you're done here. All right. Maybe. So, I'm gonna turn our light off and I'm gonna move all the setup out of the way so I can talk with all of you again. And I promise we'll look at the mystery objects in a second. So, on our observations. Cut the tap for a minute. Write down. We're almost, we're almost done, you should watch. Object is the biggest object. And then you can write down which object you think is the smallest. And you can look back at your observation. I think the biggest object is the one that had the shadow covered with two. So, okay, do you remember which object number that was? Uh, was that three. one, two, or three? Three. Three. You think it was three? Natalie, do you think object number three was the biggest two? Yeah. Yeah? So we're all in agreement that object three, we think that one's the biggest. How about object? Or which object do we think is the smallest? Number one. Natalie votes number one. Nippon and Juno. Number one. Number one. Number one. We all agree it's number one. Okay. So are we ready to see what our objects were? Yeah. yeah. All right. So object number one was, was this block. Right oh, there. wow. That okay. one Number two was this block. Two was tiny. Which one's bigger? The brown one. Well, I couldn't quite hear you. Which one is bigger? Number one. So this is number one, so it was bigger. Number two, we said, was when we made observations, we thought number one was the smallest one, right? Was actually number two was the smallest one. What? Did we make oh. So oh. that is okay because sometimes making observations when you don't have all the information can be really tricky, which is something that scientists and astronomers deal with all the time. Should we look at object number three? Yeah. yeah. All right. This is object number three. This object number three was huge. Do we think it was the biggest one? Yeah. yeah. Was that what our observation was too? Yeah. Awesome. I totally agree with all of you. We were able to tell, even though we couldn't see the object, that object number three was the biggest one out of all three. So that's something that scientists can try to do. And you're, it's totally okay if they're not right all the time. It is really difficult, especially when you're doing it for the first time, to use your observations to get it totally right. All right. Do you have any other questions about how we look for exoplanets or how this activity worked? Um, you have a question? More questions? I don't have any questions, but like I didn't, I came, did you do something before you started this grid thing? Nope, this was our activity today. Oh, so, okay. I was just asking because I came late. That's okay. Yeah, I think you just missed a little bit of instructions. Natalie, do you have a question? Yeah. Um, you know how rockets go into space and then get their big parachutes? Are you asking how they do it or are you asking if I have seen that too? Um, I'm asking if, if you have seen how rockets, how real rockets got their parachutes. I have seen them try to land, and sometimes they use a big parachute. I don't really know how that works, though. That is a great question. And, and skydivers use parachutes, too. Skydivers use parachutes. You can use a parachute to, if you want, you could build a parachute for one of your toys. I've seen a lot of people do that before. What? We've actually done that. Oh, you know. 
for? What if my uncles like to skydive? So you know someone who's actually used a parachute. That's awesome, Nipah. Yeah, I'm not yeah, sure. Yeah, me too. Long. I saw a person do that too. You've seen it too? I first, I first thought it was a balloon. It can sort of look like that. Do you have a comment, Natalie, or a question? My, I have a question. Go right ahead. You know, up in Daddy's office, we made paper airplanes. You've made paper airplanes? Yeah, that can be really fun. That's sort of like a rocket, huh? And you know, um, me and Daddy really like to play outside. We do. Awesome. I love to play outside, too. And you know, right, hold on, let's, let's give everybody else a chance to ask questions. Hold on. So that's actually going to bring me to, uh, I'm going to tell you what we're going to do next week. Next Tuesday, when we meet again, we're going to do an activity that has to do with nature, which maybe, mm -hmm. Natalie, you like because you like going outside. You we're like going to dissect a flower. So we're going to learn. What's dissect mean? Dissect means you're going to take it apart and sort of look at all the different parts that make up a flower. Can you type the materials in the chat? We will put those up on our Facebook page later, but you will basically want a flower. And you should ask no, permission yeah. before you pick something. So make sure the grown-up says it's okay. And you'll want some things to take that flower apart. And that could be tweezers and scissors, and you might want a magnifying glass. And you could have some things to write down your observations. I'm going to paste this all in the chat right now because I think that's a great idea, Nippon. I just posted it there. But we'll post that on our Facebook page later in case you don't have it. But that way you can learn more about nature and flowers. All right. Does anyone have any final questions before we wrap up today? Uh, what does wrap up mean? We're going to finish. Oh. Okay, um, I don't have any. Judy doesn't have any questions? All right. Well, thank you all so much for joining us, and hopefully we'll see you next week for Flower Dissection. Yay, that's going to be so fun. Thanks, everybody. Bye.